Hello there folks, it's uh, Road Dog Does Politics here with another video for you. Uh, firstly, I'd like to apologise for not uploading content in the last few weeks. Um, you may or may not have noticed, but um, yeah, just job and life got in the way, so I apologise. Um, so today I'd like to start by um, talking about a subject that doesn't seem to have gone away for the past week or so, and that is to do with Boris Johnson of and his um, comments in the Telegraph at, that he wrote a column on um, Muslim women who wear burqas or face veils saying that they look like um, letterboxes and comparing them to bank robbers. Now um, I think it's important to note here that um, in his article, his column, he specifically wasn't explicitly um, saying that the burqa should be banned within the UK. He was sort of defending, well not defending, but just saying that, you know, free speech and, you know, um, I don't think, as in Denmark, that the burqa should be banned. Um, but at the same time, making those comments, was it deliberate? Yes. Uh, was it a political a savvy political move in order to position himself in a further position of power? Yes, definitely, because we all know that Boris Johnson, being whom he is, does things very specifically and very calculated for very specific reasons for himself on the most part. Boris does things for Boris. So let's not pretend that this article that he wrote was anything other than a political um, piece of, you know, egotistical um, self-servingness, I guess. Well, seeing as we're on the topic of the burqa and the way that some Muslim women, not all Muslim women, dress um, with the face veil and the niqab, so it basically only shows their eyes. So as we're talking about that, and a lot of people within the Muslim community have rightly gotten offended by those comments that Boris made. Um, do I think that he chose the wrong choice of, he used the wrong choice of words to describe Muslim women specifically? I absolutely do. I think that he could have um, gone about that whole issue a lot more tactfully, a lot more sensibly using, you know, more sensitive language. But obviously, as I've just said, Boris does things very in a very calculated way and he'll only do it if he knows that it's going to prevaricate and provoke a reaction within certain communities of people and he's absolutely gone and achieved that because he we now have the reaction in the media and within certain groups of minorities that we have now but if we're going to have that debate about um you know the face veil and it's place within the UK. I think, you know, if we want to have that debate, then absolutely. I think that we shouldn't feel like um, if we if we have sort of a controversial opinion about what we think about it, then we shouldn't be, people shouldn't be labelled as racist or anti-Islam for pointing out that um, the face veil is a little bit, you know, it makes people uncomfortable. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, you know, necessarily part of UK culture and whatever you think UK culture is um, and also pointing things out like um, is it sort of used for male domination and male control purposes within the Muslim religion um, and you could make that case and there's plenty to criticise the Muslim, Muslim religion for um, and I think if, if women want to wear the niqab and they want to wear the burqa then fine if it's their choice to do that then fine they're completely free and within their rights to do that it's their body their choice their choice to wear the clothes that they want to wear where i have a problem is that um the interpretation within the quran of wearing the niqab and the face veil based on the fact that um it solicits male like their the desire for women um, and and they're, you know, they, they're unable to control themselves based on the fact that they can see too much of the women's skin. 
and they have to sort of cover up based on that fact. I think that that's that's you're sort of going down a dark path there, and it's that takes you down the sort of as I said male control, male domination sort of road, which I don't agree with. And you know any woman or young woman who feels that they are sort of coerced into wearing these garments based on the fact that they've been told to and it's not necessarily their choice, then that's where I think, you know, you start getting problems. However, back to Boris Johnson, I think by not apologising for the comments that he made about w Muslim women and the fact that they wear the burqa, um, as I said, I think that they are inappropriate comments, he should have apologised. However, by not apologising within his column and being backed up by members of his family, um, and the media just not holding him to account the way they should be. I think he is successfully dog whistling to more extreme, radical, um, anti Islam sort of UKIPers and, you know, saying, you know, come on, it's okay to be slightly racist or, you know, full on racist if you like. I'm your man. And, you know, if you have a problem with Muslims, if you've got a problem with black people, if you've got a problem with Jews, then, you know, I'm the man that you need to come to because I'm the person that's going to say it how it is. Again, come back to that phrase, because saying it how it is means that you somehow have a right to be offensive to people, no matter who it is, no matter what sort of language you use. And, you know, completely not being held to account for it, which the media should be doing. And incidentally... If you saw on Sunday, which was yesterday, um, there were a group of journalists that were outside Boris Johnson's house and um, Boris came out with, you know, very casually dressed as he always is um, at the weekend and with a tray of tea saying, I don't want to talk about that, but have some tea. Go on, have a cup of tea. And it's basically just, you know, shoving the real important issues out of the way as if to say, I don't care and, you know, I can have you, you know, like we could I can have journalists weak at the knees based on the fact that I've given them a cup of tea and it's so easy for him he knows exactly what he's doing and he he's very he's as I said he's very politically savvy he does things for very specific reasons and you know I've got a, a, a few tweets here from um David Schneider who's an actor and director on Twitter um and uh he's tweeted saying um Boris Johnson, have a cup of tea, forget of, forget about my racist dog whistling and my screwing the country for my own gain. Have some tea, go on, go on, go on. And as you can see, there's a picture of Mrs Doyle from uh, Father Ted. <laughs> uh, and it, it's exactly, it's exactly what he wants. And again, he, he says, um, find me a video which says that if you spout far right rhetoric you can literally have the media eating out of your hand slash drinking tea out of your hand so I don't know if you could see this but um, here's Boris Johnson offering offering tea to members of the media and camera crews um, dressed in some sort of casual shirt and um, it's, it's very clever and it, it, he you know I mean, I'm not going to give him much credit, but he is a, a smart guy. Um, and I'll just go back. I'll go back to another tweet that Theo Oshawa of L LBC tweeted out about this tea giving. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, the point about offering tea is that it's literally a mechanical ploy to thwart broadcast media. Try standing in a small crowd, taking a boiling hot drink, holding a microphone slash camera, and then thinking of an erudite question to ask. It's difficult and we keep falling for it. So yes, again, sort of hinting towards Boris's bumbling, humorous nature, in that as soon as, you know, Boris has done something, he'll turn into this sort of very, um, sort of fun-loving, you know, guy that you know he's very he's very good at turning the charm on and off when he wants and that that's just another example of it and the media fall for it every time and they just seem to stop doing their jobs because of it and it's it's terrible that they do that so 
yeah that's that's why I think about Boris and it's it's just it's terrible isn't it it's just terrible that you know no one seems to be taking him like to you know to task over this and this sort of far right rhetoric that keeps going on and on and on and the left is just doing it is just failing like on a massive level to hold them to account and they're just having their own issues and everyone's infighting it's just it's a terrible terrible time for the UK at the moment it's terrible for Europe and like far right parties are, are on the rise and it's just I don't know it's just a mess I don't know what to do about it we need to do something about it and I don't know what the answer is at the current time but yeah uh, that's my opinion on Boris Johnson's Burka comments so yeah let me know what you think down in the comments if you've got any other opinions or opposing views I'd love to hear from you and um, it's really good to get a lively animated debate going so let me know what you think um, I'll be around in some streams as well in the following weeks so yeah don't forget to tune in um rate comment and subscribe as well don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell if you want to be notified every time I upload um, and I'll see you soon, folks. Bye.